I met Earl in my beginning days. I was guiding and I was guest host on a bunch of different shows. And Byron Velvick was a pro. And he had a show called Guide's Eyes. He called me and he said, George, hey listen, Earl Benz, he's a sponsor. I run a Triton boat. Do you mind if he comes along while we film our episode? And I'm like, no, no, not at all. Come to find out Earl has a home right here in Stewart, right in Palm City, right by my house. And we just hit it off. You know, I knew the water well. Earl had a desire for knowledge in the area and I was willing to share that knowledge and we just hit it off. We had a common bond with fishing and when he'd come into town, I'd, I'd take time off, we'd fish together and we just, the more time we spent on the boat with each other, our friendship grew even stronger. He invited me up to Tennessee, he took me hunting uh, on his property and we, had a, we just had a lot of good times together. Canal tunas, pound for pound. Aggressive, love topwater plugs. Surface bite, extremely aggressive. Can't pass it up. If you see that, you can't pass it up. You have to throw to it. Oh! Oh God! Oh God! Don't go that way. It came right out of my shoe. Jack. Too darn cold to go in the water. <laughs> That's how it goes. What are you going to do? We're literally across from the boat ramp. This is right where the, the biggest boat ramp in Stewart. We pull in, grab some bait from, from the bait guy, Brian. He pulls away and I thought maybe he dumped, accidentally dumped some bait in the water because the next thing I know there's explosions everywhere. Those windows just open quickly and they close quickly and you have to be ready for them. Nice bite. Oh, that's, that's a full grown. At the uh oh, I don't know, George. Hands full of that one. Yep, he's going out to sea. <laughs> I'd rather him go that way. Might be here to lunch. <laughs> Worst places to be. You grab the six pound rod. Is this six? I think so. I got the littlest one out there. Uh, look at that thing. <laughs> Good gracious, alive. Oh, my goodness. This thing is big. Oh, gosh. God, on that Yozuri, that's so much fun. Isn't that fun? I tell you what, those plugs are catching. <laughs> you got the smallest rod, 10 pound. I'm getting uh, ready to change braid. Look at the colors on them. I love to surround myself with smart, successful people. And I think that's how you, you better yourself. And Earl's one of, those, one of those people, you know, he's, he's good at so many different things. But it's interesting enough, he's told people before that him and I are friends because he appreciates the knowledge that I share with him. He understands that I have knowledge of the fishery here and he's learned a lot from me. And it's that mutual respect that we have for each other that I think is the common bond. Oh, that's a snook. Is that a snook? Yep. You're a kid. That's a good one too. Ooh. I think it's a snook. Uh, maybe not. God, it came up like one. Nope. Jack. Jack? Yeah. Oh, that's a big one. That plug don't shoot out and hit you. Yep. <sighs> Whew. Son. That'll test everything you got there. He's had something chewing on him. God, he got hit. 
Still doing okay. Yeah. I don't think um, a lot of people, you know, they don't understand the history of where you came from. And I, that's kind of what I'm, I'm intrigued by and I think other people will be intrigued by as well. So I had an uncle, D.F. Jenkins, who had started a boat repair shop in Charleston, working on outboard motors. He was boat racing at the time, which really intrigued me. And he said, how would you like to learn the marine business? Well, buddy, that was music to my ears. In May of 1966, I went to work for him for $1.25 an hour, which was also a big raise from what I was making on the farm, by the way. When I was 16, he crashed, got hurt, and asked me if, uh, if I wanted to drive the race boat. So I actually drove for him until uh, 1973, when I went to work as a race driver for Mercury Marine. Like their counterparts in the automotive field, the manufacturers are constantly striving to perfect race-proven innovations in outboard propulsion. But what about the drivers? What motivates them? Some of them, like the orange-helmeted Team Mercury drivers, have already become legends in racing circles. Bill Siebold of St. Louis, Missouri. More than 44 records in worldwide competition. Earl Bentz, Nashville, Tennessee the youngest member of the team. His first year out as a driver, Earl won 16 races in a row, including the big St. Louis Grand Prix. And Reggie Fountain, Greenville, North Carolina, two-time world champion. These men all have one thing in common. Regardless of the obstacles, they go flat out to win. What I like most about being on the water and going fast was there no, no speed limits on the water. Little boats with big engines uh, appeal to me in a big way. The thought of getting killed does go through your mind. Now that I will tell you, but you you know what you say is how you reason it out in your own mind, how I did. You, and it's pretty stupid, but you say, you know, well, at least if, I, if I'm, I'm doing something I love. If I get killed, I'm doing something I love. I mean, how crazy is that? The boat racing back in the day was pretty crazy. You, you see the boats that they were running, the speeds that they were running at. They didn't have the safety gear that they do nowadays. And uh, it seems like these guys were like kind of living life on the edge. In August 1973, we had the APBA, American Powerboat Association National Championships uh, in Newfall, Alabama. Uh, unfortunately, I crashed, did a blow over. Uh, broke my back in three places, uh, broke four ribs, it broke my jaw. He was in the hospital for, for, I don't know, months, he said. Been out of the boat numerous times, over 100 miles an hour. For him to have that kind of history and survive, be here to tell the stories, <laughs> still in, in one piece. That's pretty, uh, pretty incredible. He's there, he's there. <laughs> Whoa, I'm a swim for a swim. I'm hooked up too. <laughs> I almost fell in the water. <laughs> it's snook. Nice little snook. Is that a snook? Yeah. Little guy. No kid. There we go. I get it. You get yours. I'm out. I about slipped right in the water when I set the hook. That would have been good, good for good TV. The hooker? Ah, I got him. Let's grab him. Oh, yours is a little thicker. A little thicker. And there's a little belly on that thing. Slide a little bit. Yeah, that
I think mine's bigger, George. He approaches fishermen like I approach boat building. He doesn't settle for well, second best. He likes to win. He's very competitive. I have fished with guides and hunted with guides that throw it over there and sit back and wait and they eat the sandwich and they don't work at it. George was from the bow of the boat to the stern of the boat all day long, back and forth, hunting for bait, watching birds. I could tell he was a winner and he didn't like to lose, so he's my kind of guy. Doubled up. We're on the meat, Earl. We're on the meat, buddy. Too bad season's closed. Earl's a meat, yeah, Earl's, a, Earl's a fish eater. Right, Earl, what do you have for breakfast when you're here? Uh, fish and grits. Fish and grits. I don't care if we're leaving at five in the morning, you get to his house, he's got fish and grits. I've been using PowerPole since they first came out, and I tell you what, it's one of those things on your boat that I would not go without. PowerPole's invented the shallow water anchor. Others that are duplicating it and trying to replicate it, but they're the originators, and they're best at it. PowerPoles have so many different uses, it's not just for fishing. True, they'll stop you right on a flat so you can effectively fish an area, but also other applications as well. Let's say you're launching the boat at the boat ramp, there's no better way to stop the boat than just drop the power poles down. Only thing you have to do is tie up the bow of the boat. You pull up to the sandbar with the family, just drop the power poles down, the boat stays there. They'll bend over backwards to make things right. If there's ever an issue, a quick call to power pole, they make things right. And power pole is no longer just the poles, now they have charging systems as well. Complete battery monitoring systems, an app that you can use on your phone to monitor your batteries as well. It's one of those great businesses that it's easy to support. They have great customer service, great product, innovators in the industry. That's why I choose PowerPole. Um, why don't you just get comfy and we'll just start chatting, I guess. We started Triton in 1996. In five years, we were the largest producing fiberglass boat builder in North America. Brunswick came along in 2005 and said, we're either gonna buy your company or we're gonna buy your competitor. So we sold and I reduced my role to a consulting role and uh, until they sold the company five years later. So I said, heck with it. My wife and I talked about it. We, we said, I'm just going to retire. Went to Stewart, Florida. I fished every day when I wasn't fishing. I was either duck hunting or quail hunting. And uh, after about three months, uh, I got up one morning and I looked over at Janet and I said, I can't do this. And of course, she said, you can't do what? And I said, this retirement stuff. She said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm getting on a plane going back to Nashville. Snook. Little snook. There you go. Snook are not very cold tolerant. We're on, really on the northern edge of the snook population. They don't like cold water. So when it cools off, it can be a challenge. We have deep holes. We have proximity close to the ocean where the water stays pretty mild. So that helps as well. But you know, it's definitely not the best time of the year to be here snook fishing. Circle hook did its job. Right in the corner of the mouth. Right in the button. That's a pretty little yeah, fish. Guy. Oh, they're still fun no matter how big they are. That's the crazy thing about this area. You can throw in one spot, you can get a dink, or you can get a 40 inch fish. We've caught plenty of 40s over our t time, Earl and I together and you just grow to appreciate every bite. It doesn't matter if it's a small one or a big one. I mean, we've caught thousands of snook here. Earl, 
had a previous boat company that's supported me and it's pretty much made right across the street from his old factory. So he's still in the same office. Not a lot of things have changed. You know, Tennessee is known for its boat building. You know, he, he rehired a lot of people that used to work for him. It's amazing that they started with this one facility, they've already grown, they've already doubled their size, and they can't get these boats out fast enough. One thing that racing did for me to give me an advantage in my boat building career is never ending tireless seven days a week, daylight to dark, testing to get every, to make it perfect. Same is true with production, whether it's a bass boat or a center console boat. We use the best hardware. We don't compromise. We don't cut any corners. We don't take a back seat to anybody on quality and performance. You're not sponsored by a company. You're endorsing a company because you believe in it. And that's how I feel with, with Earl and Caymans. I'm part of the family. They take what I say, the constructive criticism that I have, and they listen to it. We continue to improve everything. You know, as the, as the company grows, I'm proud to be a part of it. I see my boats as different than other people see them. People see them as pleasure crafts and this and that. To me, it's a tool to do a job and it does a job well. And that's what's important to me. I always refer to it as like a work truck. They're like, well, people will get on my boat and they're like, oh, I don't have my, sho my shoes are on, should I take my shoes off? No, this boat is meant to get dirty. It's meant to catch fish. It's meant to get blood on it. It's pretty, yeah, but it's, it does a job. Wow, wow. Wow, oh my God. Yeah, this is the one right here. This is the one. This is the one. This is the one. This is the one. Let him eat it. Oh, did he get it? Oh, he's belly rolling on it. Oh my God. <laughs> Please eat. Oh, yes. <laughs> Look at that tank. <laughs> They'll jump sometimes. Oh, stay hooked. You get a net. Stay hooked. No, I ain't got a net. Oh my god! Look at that thing. Woo! <laughs> Ripping drag out. What a solid fish. Look at the size of that triple tail. That's a toad. Just about everything else is closed season inshore. You might as well get that thing. That's about as good as it gets eating right there. Look at that stud. Wow. He's gonna be fun to handle. This is absolutely the biggest triple tail I've ever caught in my life. This is a giant. Your biggest? That's the biggest I've ever caught, yeah. Whenever you can sight cast to a fish, it adds a whole nother element. When you can see it, you go after it, it you know, doubles the, the points scored, in my opinion. I would take one that I saw to 10 that I never saw. Earl, I tell you, that is a stud. You catch me like that, George? It's funny, I've, I've caught some big ones. This is this is a good size one here for sure. The Indian River has a bunch of these. On a lot of the structure this time of the year, you know, it, it thought of as a, you know, a fish that you catch on things that are floating offshore, but we got some big ones inshore. You know, we started off this morning catching jacks. Then snook. <laughs> we just we've been upgrading all day. <laughs> we, <been> <laughs> we better quit day. while we're ahead. Take this one back. And this thing, this thing ate a pilchard too. You know, most people talk about shrimp. And yep, he had no problem eating that white bait. Oh no, he loved it. But his diet consists of a lot of crabs, crustaceans. That's why they're such good eating fish. And 
tell you, this is gonna, this one's gonna feed you well, my my friend. This Fish is why tacos you come, tonight, my friend. This is why you come to Florida. Not a lot of people can appreciate the fact that you're gonna run 20 miles down the river to catch one fish, and there's no guarantee that you're gonna catch that one fish. Earl's a hunter; he gets it. You can go that whole way and find one big one, and it, it makes your day. It's been a good day, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great day. And thanks for all you do for us at Gas. Oh, appreciate the support. Appreciate all the feedback you give us to help make our products better, and we'll keep building them. <laughs> I'll keep running them. I would just like to note that I'm in the picture right next to his wife. What's that? I said, I'm right next to your wife. I'm in that boat. The 26, that's me. Yep. Right next to your wife. That's true. He put that there today for me. <laughs> that is very true. They're ugly as hell, but they eat well. I just made a rhyme. Nice. Love having a tea top. Ready? No way I'm not in your shot, man. <laughs> Bro, you're my shot. God, he is cold. I am too. <laughs> Gotta make him look really big. <laughs> I pulled my arm. 